In the previous lecture, we saw what are power signals and we already know how to calculate the average power of continuous time signals. Now in this lecture, which is part 1, part 1 of solved problems based on power of continuous time signals, we will solve two questions which you can see on your screen and we will also discuss what will happen to the average power on performing different operations. Let's see the solution of first problem here signal is x1t and it is equal to a0 sin omega0 t. We have sin omega0 t in signal x1t this means signal x1t is a periodic signal a0 is the amplitude signal x1t is periodic signal and this implies signal x1t is a power signal. In the previous presentation we saw periodic signals are always power signals and as signal x1t is power signal the average power is going to be finite. Now let's calculate the average power using the formula of average power for periodic signals. Average power p is equal to integration from minus t0 by 2 to t0 by 2 a0 sin omega0 t is x1t and here we will have mod of x1t whole square. So in place of this I can write a0 square sin square omega0 t a0 square sin square omega0 t dt. Now we can easily perform the integration but there is one more thing we need to add in this formula. We need to divide it by t0 t0 is the fundamental time period and to find out the average we need to divide this value by the total time which is t0. Now let's calculate the value here 1 by t0 integration minus t0 by 2 to t0 by 2. a0 square is independent of time so I can take it out in this way we will have a0 square over t0 and sin square omega0 t I can write as 1 minus cos 2 omega naught t by 2 so I will write 1 minus cos twice of omega naught t divided by 2 dt now from here we will have a naught square over 2 t naught this 2 I have taken out of the integration and then we will perform the integration of 1 first minus t0 by 2 to t0 by 2 this one will come here dt now we are left with minus cos 2 omega0 t so we will have minus integration minus t0 by 2 to t0 by 2 cos twice of omega0 t dt now this is your task to simplify this and when you simplify this you will have the average power p equal to a0 square by 2 we can also calculate the root mean square value. The root mean square value is equal to square root of average power p. So we have square root a0 square by 2 and in this way we have a0 over root 2. So a0 square by 2 is the value of average power and the RMS value is equal to a0 by root 2. And this is for signal x1t which is equal to a0 sin omega0 t. Now we will perform the time scaling. Let's perform the time scaling. And after performing the time scaling, we have the signal x2t which is equal to x1 twice of t. So you can see we have performed the time scaling by multiplying 2 to the time. And in this way we have a signal which is equal to a0 sin twice of omega0 t. Now perform the above steps and you will get the average power and the RMS value. But I will write down the average power and the RMS value directly for this signal here. The average power will be same a0 square by 2. And as the average power is same the RMS value will also be the same a0 by root 2. So we can say that there is no effect of time scaling on the average power. Now let's perform the next operation which is phase shift. We will perform the phase shift and this time we have signal x3t which is equal to a0 sin 
omega naught t plus phi where phi is the phase shift and for this signal also the average power is going to be a naught square by 2 and the rms value will be a naught by root 2 for this also p will be a naught square by 2 and the rms value will be a naught by root 2 so we can say that there is no effect of phase shift on the average power let's perform the next operation which is time reversal time reversal and this time the signal is x40 and it is equal to x1 minus t we have performed the time reversal and uh, in this case we will have a naught sine minus omega naught t or we can write minus a naught sine omega naught t and for this signal also the power the average power and the rms value will remain same so we can say that there is no effect of time reversal on the average power now let's see the other operation this time the operation is time shifting signal is x5 t and it is equal to x1 t plus 2 the signal will become a naught sine sine omega naught inside the bracket t plus 2 when you open the bracket you will have a naught sine omega naught t plus twice of omega naught so this is the new signal and in this case when you calculate the average power the average power and the rms value it will remain same it will be a naught square by 2 and a naught by root 2 so we can say that time shifting is having no effect on the average power and also the rms value now let's perform the next operation the next operation is the operation on amplitude and we will perform amplitude reversal the signal is x6 t and it is equal to minus x1 t so we have minus a naught sine omega naught t and if you see this signal and this signal you will find they are same so the average power and the rms value will not change they will remain same a naught square by 2 rms value will be a naught by root 2 let's perform the next operation the next operation is important because in this operation the average power will not remain the same in amplitude reversal the average power is having no effect but in case of amplitude scaling the average power will change let's say the signal is x70 and it is equal to twice of x1t so we have performed the amplitude scaling and this time the signal will be twice of a naught sine omega naught t now before finding out the average power and the rms value i will let you know the general case for amplitude scaling if there is signal xt and for this signal the average power is p and you multiply this signal by k and a number can be real or imaginary this time the power will become modulus k square p so we can use this result to find out the average power in this case let's do it quickly the average power of signal x1t is equal to a naught square by 2 and this time the average power for this signal let's call it p7 will be mod k square k is equal to 2 so 2 square multiplied by a naught square by 2 when you simplify this you will get twice of a naught square so this time the average power is not same it is increased by performing the amplitude scaling and what will happen to the rms value the rms value is under root average power so we have root 2 a naught so in this way you can calculate the average power and the root mean square value in case of amplitude scaling and we can say that amplitude scaling is having some effect on the average power and also the rms value and the effect is written here now we will use all these properties to solve the second question
in this lecture. In this second question, you can see signal is x 8 t and the power for this signal, which is the average power is equal to 4. There is another signal y t, which is equal to 4 j x 8 2 t plus 4. So we have performed multiple operations on signal x 8 t to obtain y t. Now in this question, we need to find out the average power for signal y t. Now let's use the properties we have seen just now. The original signal is x 8 t and it is having the average power equal to 4. Now I will perform the time shifting x 8 t plus 4. And as we have already seen, there is no effect of time shifting on the average power. The average power will remain 4. Now we will perform the time scaling x 8 twice t plus 4. The average power will remain same again because there is no effect of time scaling on the average power. The next step is to perform the amplitude scaling. Here 4j is multiplied to signal x8 2t plus 4. So let's multiply 4j to x8 2t plus 4 and this is nothing but the signal yt. And as we have seen the last property in which on performing the amplitude scaling, the average power will be multiplied by mod k square. Here k is equal to 4j. So the average power which is 4 will be multiplied by mod 4j square. And when you solve it, you will get 4 square multiplied by 4 and it is equal to 64. So 64 is the answer of the second problem. The original signal was having power equal to 4. And after performing multiple transformations here, the new signal yt is having the power equal to 64. So I think this lecture is clear to you. And if you have any doubt regarding any portion explained in this lecture, you may ask in the comment section. In the next lecture also, we will solve one or two questions based on power of continuous time signals.